Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you about one of the most common and one of the most confusing lines in all of Python. And it looks like if dunder name equals equals dunder main, like print hello. So what is going on here? Why does this line exist? What does it mean? Should we be writing it some of the time, all the time, none of the time? What in the world is happening? So the first way that I can explain to you what's going on is that when we import a module, any module at all, so if I say here, import random. So random has all sorts of attributes associated with it. And if I say here, dir of random, we're gonna see all of the names that are now available thanks to us loading the random module. And all of these names that I can get via dir, I can request them via random dot and then the name. So this lists attributes that we can retrieve via random. Now, some of these attributes might be functions or methods that we have to execute. Some of these attributes might be data. Both are totally okay. Remember, we can store data in variables. We can store functions in variables, right? They're both objects. In the same way, we can store data in attributes and we can store functions in attributes. So I can go down here and I can say here, random rand in from zero to 100 and it works just fine. So far, so good. But if we look up at the top, you'll see a whole bunch of what are known as dunders. Dunders are names with double underscore before and after them. So, and, and this is Python slang. And I must admit that I learned it watching a YouTube video many years ago. And I was like, dunder, am I hearing this wrong? No, no. So we call this dunder name, for example. And dunder name is one of the special ones that's actually set up when we import our module. If I say, hey, random, what's your dunder name? It says, oh, my dunder name is random. And basically you can think of dunder name is the string that a module uses to identify itself both to itself and more importantly, to the outside world. So I can go to any module in Python and say, hey, what are you called? And this is even true if I import it with an alias. So if I say import numpy as np, and I say now np.dunderName, hey, you know, what are you really called? It'll say numpy. And so this allows us to identify the module. By the way, this is also how the module is identified inside of Python to know if it should import the module again or not, because imports only work a single time. Great, so now we know that dunder name is an attribute on a, a module object, and that it's set to be the name of the module. So far, so good. I'm not gonna open up an editor, a simple editor that comes with Jupyter. I'm gonna change the name here. I'm gonna be mymod.py. That's what I'm gonna call it. Oh, let's do call it my new mod.py because I already got my mod there. And I'm gonna say here, uh, x equals 100, y equals 10, 20, 30. Okay, so far so good. This is a module. It's a totally legitimate module in Python. Nothing too exciting perhaps. I save it here. I go back to Jupyter and I say, import my new mod. And now I say, hey, what's my new mod dot dunder name? And we know already it's going to be the string my new mod. So far, so good. By the way, if I do a dir on my new mod, what are we going to see? We're going to see all sorts of dunders that were defined automatically by Python plus the x and y that I defined. So I can say my new mod dot x and my new mod dot y, and we get those just fine. Well, wait a second. When I imported the module, how were these things defined? How was X defined? How was Y defined? Well, the only way that this could happen is for the assignment to actually execute. That is to say for X equals 100 to execute. That's say for Y equals 10, 20, 30 to execute. In other words, when I imported this module, the module is executed as a Python program. There are no two ways about it. And if you're thinking, oh my God, that's nuts. Every time I import a module, the whole module is executed. Maybe it's nuts, but it's true. And if I want to, I can say print hello from my new mod. And then I'm gonna put something at the bottom here where I'll say goodbye from my new mod. And now if I save this here and I go back to my notebook, I'm just gonna restart things so that Python will be willing to import. I say import my new mod and look at that. It says hello, it says goodbye, because what happened when I said import, it went to this file and executed it line by line by line. This means if you are really crazy, evil, malicious, you name it, 
you could put whatever code you want in a module that people are going to load up. And when they import it, it will print, it'll do a for loop, it'll log things to a file, it'll report your location to the network. Please don't do any of these things. But when you import a module, the entire module is executed from start to finish. Okay. That's like part one, that this all exists. Part two is, if the names that I defined here, X and Y, here, these are global variables, right? But we know that even though they're global variables here, what are they in the outside world? If I say dir of my new mod, what are we going to see? We're going to see X and Y are not variables. To the outside world, they are attributes. It's my new mod dot X, my new mod dot Y. So any global variable we've defined in the module will be an attribute outside of the module. Will the opposite be the true? Be true also? Will the opposite also be the case? Meaning, will all of these dunders that are available as attributes, are they available in the module as global variables? Maybe, let's try it. So now instead of saying hello from my new mod, I'm gonna say hello from dunder name. See what I'm doing here? I'm saying maybe, just maybe, I can use an F string here and I can say dot dunder name, you know, dunder name here. And what's gonna happen? Well, if my theory is right, and if anything that's a global here is an attribute there, anything that's an attribute there is a global here, then when I import this module, it will be able to tell me what the name of the module is. I don't need to hard code it at all. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to restart the notebook. And now I'm going to say once again, import my new mod. And once again, it says hello and goodbye. And it uses the name my new mod. In other words, my theory was right. Who would have believed it? My theory was right, meaning, meaning that Dunder name is a global variable inside of our module. And outside of our module, it's an attribute on the module object. Pretty snazzy. Well, sort of, like who cares? Okay, next part to this. What happens if I execute this code as a Python program, a standalone Python program? Will that work? I mean, I'm not asking if it's a good Python program. I'm asking if it is a Python program that I can use. So I'm just gonna go here into this. I'm going to say here, my new mod is there. I'm just going to move my terminal over to where you can see it. And I'm going to say here, Python 3 of my new mod.py. Let's run this thing. And what are we going to see? Oh, ho, ho. We're getting closer to an answer. Hello from Dunder Main. Goodbye from Dunder Main. In other words, Dunder Name is a little magical. Dunder Name does not always have the same value. Whoops. Let me just go down here. So if I say here, what does dunder name contain and it always contains a string but the string will the string's value depends on what we're doing so if we have imported a module then that module's dunder name contains the string of the module's name as we've already seen all right but if the module is a program the first program that we have loaded with Python, then its value will be a special string dunder main. I'm going to put in like quotes there so it'll be clearer. And again, I know it's really confusing that we have the variable dunder name and the string dunder main. I know it. By the way, watch what happens here in Jupyter. Jupyter was what I'm using now, and it was the first thing that I ran with Python. So if I now say, what is the value of the dunder name that variable? Aha, dunder main, because this was the first thing I ran. So you can think of it that whenever you run a Python program, the first thing you run gets a special dunder name value of dunder main. Everything else is imported, and it will get its module's name as, as the value of dunder name. Okay, let's bring this all together now. I don't want to always have it print. I said before, it's kind of rude, it's bad style, it's just like bad in general to print things out when people import your module. So what I want to do is say, I only want to print when the when my new mod.py is being run as a standalone program. When it is imported 
by another program and used as a module, I want it to remain silent. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say if dunder name equals equals dunder main, then do this. And now you're starting to see how this works and why it works. The whole point of if dunder name equals dunder main is only do this thing if it's a program. Don't do this thing if it's a module. And now if I save this, and now if I go back to Jupyter, now if I restart Jupyter, and now I say import my new mod, silence. It doesn't mean it was not imported, because I can still say my new mod.x and my new, new mod.y. But if I go back to the command line and I run it, it's as chatty as ever. Hello from Dundermain, goodbye from Dundermain. So we now know that this works thanks to a combination of things. It works because modules are executed when we import them. It and thus we can have if statements as well as anything else. Dunder name is a special value that is assigned a string based on the way in which our module was loaded and run. If it's the first thing being run by program, it's Dunder main. And if it's anything else, it is its module's name. And then we can take advantage of that in our if statement to check things. So that raises an interesting question of who cares? Maybe that's not such an interesting question by itself, but like, who would use this? And so there are a whole bunch of different things you might do. So number one is you might want to provide an interactive uh, um, you know, method of invoking your module. In other words, the module might provide libraries, functions, any sort of thing that other people can use if they import your module. But maybe you want to provide a user-facing uh, function as well. So this is one way to do that. If name equals main, then you ask the user for input and use that input in your functions, invoke your functions. Number two is you might want to invoke uh, automated testing on your module. I've definitely seen people do that. You run the module. And it doesn't like it. Well, it has all the uh, all the libraries available, right? All the functions available, so we can just run all the tests. You know, you can do a bit of advertising for your module, right? You know, run it at the command line, and it tells you all the things it can do. But there are also some technical places where you might need to do it. So number four is if you're using multiprocessing, right, or anything that involves multiple processes, then you should put your code under you know, if dunder name equals equals dunder main. And why is that? So that Python doesn't get super confused and load itself, because it always has to load itself. Because when you have multiprocessing, you have multiple Python processes, and each one then has to load a program. And if it loads the program, and the program then starts processes, and then those start processes, you're going to run out of processes pretty soon. So this is a common thing to do, that you put the code that you want to run under if name equals main, but you put, say, the functions you want to run uh, above that line. Um, and there are a whole bunch of other places you might want to use it. Do you need to use it? No. Is it the same as the main function in C? Very much not so. So if you don't want to use if name equals main, don't use it. It's a piece of functionality that a lot of people use in Python, but doesn't mean that you need to. And if you see someone's code and they don't have an if name equals main, that doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means that their use case is probably a little bit different from yours. Or they always want to print something when people import their modules. I'll just say one last thing, which is that while it's technically correct that I can have more than one if name equals main, it's pretty rare to do that. Usually we're just going to have it at the bottom of the file, and that's where we're going to have our functionality that uses all the functions, data, classes that were uh, set up above. Okay, I hope that this was useful and helpful in understanding if dunder name equals dunder main. If you have questions, leave them here. If you want to see more stuff about Python, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my Better Developers mailing list, and I'll be back here soon with more stuff about Python. Thanks for watching.